I want to thank uh, my colleagues. Senator McCaskill has a well-earned reputation for being a stalwart advocate for victims of sexual predators. That's been her history. I look to Senator McCaskill as an expert here in the United States Senate, and that's one of the reasons I'm very, very honored to be able to work with her on these issues. With Senator Ayotte, we know about her previous life before the Senate as well as a prosecutor, as an attorney general. She, too, has great experience here that I think is reflected in the legislation that we advanced out of uh, Armed Services Committee and our markup, which the committee, uh, the majority, came together. It was a very open, it was a very transparent process. We had an open hearing during that discussion on sexual assault during the markup. The press was there. And so that was, that was, I think, a proper way to address this challenge that we're facing. Now I'd like to also thank them for working so hard on this amendment, because I think it makes the uh, markup that came out of uh, committee even better. Uh, they mentioned some important changes uh, that we have in this amendment, and I'd like to point out just a couple more. All along, I've said that while we need to deal with sexual offenders, we cannot lose sight of the victims. That's where our focus needs to be. And this amendment keeps that very important focus in place. It enhances the accountability by ensuring that the performance assessments specifically evaluate individual commanders' management of sexual assault allegations, as well as their protection of the victims. Again, I think what all of us are looking for in dealing with this is, is to better protect victims. And this amendment also extends all sexual assault protections that are included in the NDAA to our military service academies as well. It's important that our young people who attend these academies, who are best and brightest, are protected and know that they have the assurances of this Congress and of their government and of the people of this country that they will be protected. So these changes, both in our amendment and the whole NDAA, are very significant. I believe they are very thoughtful. As I said, my two colleagues behind me have such a great background of experience with these issues that they have worked diligently to make sure that we are putting forth good policy. This isn't about politics. This is about policy. And so I believe that that's what we're helping to make even better with this amendment. It improves. It updates the current system. It expands protections for victims. What changes aren't doing is to radically remake the entire military justice system. I think that would carry significant risk. We're seeing improvements now through the different branches, and I believe with uh, this bill that passes with our amendment, we'll make those changes even better. We all know that there's a desire with everyone in the United States Senate to solve this problem, but we cannot let it blind our judgment. Changes to the UCMJ should come after a deliberate and a very transparent process, and that's what we've done. We've had input from all sides. That's what we've done. And this amendment is a product of that effort. A final point that I would like to make we're three women standing up here today. We're all members of the Armed Services Committee. But I've said from the very beginning that it's my firm belief that sexual assault is not a gender issue. This is a violence issue. And we are addressing that violence issue here. So I would encourage all of my colleagues in the Senate to take a look at this very serious policy proposal and I hope that they will step forward and support it.